Again, I'm Dr. Heidi Fell, and in this video, we're going to look at doing some disease management searches from Winton Wolf. So, if you look at some of the prior videos, we talked about using a common vocabulary within your clinic in order to identify all patients with hypertension, etc. And this becomes very important when we want to do further searches. So, you can use parameters like billing codes and lab results, things like that, to identify patients with a specific problem. But then I would recommend that you add the certain name of the problem to their problem list. For example, hypertension or type 2 diabetes. Because the most reliable way to perform searches for chronic disease management within Wolf is to open up this history parameter on the left hand side here. And to use this problem specific parameter. Okay. So in this case we're going to build on our hypertension examples from the other videos. So we type in the top box and choose from the bottom. Now we have all of our hypertension options but remember that in one of the other videos we chose the ones that we wanted to have a 401 code with them and so we know that this 401 here is our preferred vocabulary and what we've put in most of our patient problem lists. So if we want to find all of my patients that have hypertension, we want any age, um, no specified gender, not deceased, active uh, patients on my panel with problem specifically of hypertension in their problem list that is still active. Okay. Now remember when you run a search you're going to use this button on the left hand side to to print a list for you. I'm going to use the one next to it that creates a pie chart. Okay, So I have 57 total patients in my practice that have hypertension. Now, for example, what if you wanted to make sure that you were monitoring the renal function in every one of those patients? So you wanted to see if a patient had had a creatinine within the last year. Well, in that case, we can go back and there's two ways you can look at this. One is you want to find all your patients that have uh, high creatinines, or two, you just want to make sure that your patients have their creatinine measured. In this case, we're just making sure that they have their creatinine measured. So we can look at how we can use this lab results received parameter. Okay. So we type in the top our creatinine. You could use uh, GFR as well, depending on how your lab reports things for you. So we type in the top box and we choose from the bottom. Now anytime we're using lab data you'll see that sometimes there's multiple lab sources and these create multiple entries. Generally the one we want is the one with an asterisk beside it. Okay, If you have problems building your search and the one with the asterisk beside it is not working, you likely have a problem with lab merge codes. And I believe there's another video telling you how to fix those. Okay, But we'll go with the one with the asterisk here. And we want to know about our patients in the last one year. So we tick the observed box, observed in the last year. And let's see how many of them have had their creatinine checked in that period of time. Okay, so 48. Now, let's see how many of them have not had their creatinine checked in that period of time. Okay, so we've got 9. So this now forms the basis of a search, which we could then go on and save. And if we wanted to, we could save it as a rule. And next time those patients came in with hypertension in their problem list, it would remind me that they haven't had their renal function checked within the last year. So that's how you build one looking to see if you've done a lab result, you know, a lab test on a patient. So uh, the same idea would be for an A1C in a diabetic within the last six months. You'd use exactly the same thing, only use, you'd use the parameter A1C instead. So let's build a different search based on diabetes this time, where we're looking for all of our patients who have a hemoglobin A1C of more than 7.0. So in this case, we can push on the white piece of paper to start a new search. Okay, I have this search saved otherwise, so I'm not going to save this version of it. Sorry, I can say yes, I want to clear this search. And we're going to start again, only this time we're going to use 
our problem as diabetes. So again, I know that I have all of my patients with type 2 diabetes are labeled with this particular terminology. Okay? So diabetes, type 2, etc. And you can choose whichever one you want and clinic-wide um, as long as you're consistent about it. I want it currently active. Okay. And then I want to add a parameter, but first I recommend that you check each time you add a parameter that your search seems to be making sense. Okay? So 18 total patients in my panel with type 2 diabetes. Okay, I have a few more type 1s I know, but that sounds about right. So now we can go ahead and rather than using lab results received, which is what we use to determine if they had that lab result done, we actually care about the value this time and more than that we care about the most recent value. So we're going to use this lab results most recent parameter instead. So we're going to type in A1C in the top, choose hemoglobin A1C from the bottom and again usually the one with the asterisk. Okay and we want to find where the value is greater than 7.0. Okay. Now in this case we're going to run the search and see how many of them are more than 7.0. Okay. So 10 out of my 18, boy that doesn't seem like a very good ratio but that's okay. Um, many as you can see um, at least some of them are significantly older and we may not be monitoring them at close as, as tightly. And what I would do at this point is I would actually click in these to see who these patients were and to see what the circumstances were around them. And as you know, there are a number of reasons why patients might not be under control, but this just provides me with a uh, measure of how I'm doing to see if I can improve any of those patients' uh, glycemic control or not. Right. So now we've built two different searches, one looking for if you've even done uh, a lab result or if the patient has gone, and the second one looking at the value. Now you can go on, and like in any of the other videos, uh, you can go on and save this search. So File, Save Search, the top one, and then you can give it a name and go on to save it. Um, and if you want, you can go on to save it as a rule to remind you when one of those patients comes in that they have a hemoglobin A1C out of range. But I hope that this has been helpful for you to figure out how you can begin to use the EMR to help monitor your chronic disease patients and help measure how you're doing against certain benchmarks. Thanks. See you next time.